What's up, YouTube? It's your boy JB, and we are here today with a review for Sisters on BET. This is season three, episode four, you guys. Just a talk. Is that the name of the episode? That don't sound right. It really doesn't, but hey, it'll be correcting when I up, uh, edit the video and upload the video, you guys. Um, so yeah, with that, with that being said, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Stop taking me out on a date. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and leave your comments. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys. So this episode, we picked up where we left off with Andy and Gary, right? So Gary wants to get married to Andy right then and right there, right? Two people have an objection already. They didn't even start at the wedding, and two people are already objecting to it. And that is Karen and that is Danny, who are very vocal about it. Sabrina, Sabrina was kind of iffy to me with that. I'm like, Sabrina, you're not going to say nothing to your girl? Granted, Andy is a grown-ass woman, and Andy can make her own decisions. But I'm like, so you're just going to be like, because, you know, Sabrina was just sitting there looking, looking, you know, like this is a fairy tale. This is not a fairy tale. So, um, Andy, however, you know, just loves this whole thing that Gary has done to her. But the girls want to talk to Andy alone. They had a little bit of a back and forth about it, and they eventually, they left, right? And before they left, Aaron shows up, right? Aaron has shown up, and he even, you know, Andy says, but we don't even have a marriage license, baby. He's like, oh, yes, we do. I, you know, I asked for um Aaron to pick it up. I was like, oh, so you don't thought of everything, and the thing is, this is very controlling. We'll talk about Andy in just a little bit about how she really feels about it, but it's very, very controlling to me. So then the girls and Andy, you know, um, they go off, right? Um, Andy's talking about how thoughtful it was, right? It's not thoughtful. It's, you know, like I said, Karen and so, and um and and Danny feel some type of way about this. Like absolutely not. This is not thoughtful. This is controlling as hell. So Danny then says, because at one point it was just Karen going in on Andy, and then and you know Danny was like, you know what, Karen, it's her decision. Let her make it. And I was like, you know what, that is true. She is a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. But you guys, as her best friends, can you know tell her like, hey. I don't think this is a. I don't think this is the smartest decision that you could make, but you're you're a grown you're a grown woman. Whatever decision you decide to make for yourself and for Gary, I might not like it, but I'm here to support you. Shit. So Andy says she doesn't know what to do, and but she does you know say that she's scared, right? I'm like, well, if you're scared. Why are you going back and forth? And because obviously Andy is going back and forth with her decision, with this decision to marry um, Gary. So Karen calls it what it is, you know, controlling. And Andy, like us, Andy is so freaking annoying. So the thing is, Andy let us know how she really felt, right? So Andy said that on her first date with Gary, she told Gary, you know, how it would be, you know, how she would love a surprise wedding, right? She also said that, you know, she um, told him about her bridesmaids' dresses. She told him what her wedding dress would look like, what her bouquet would look like, and he remembered that. Okay. I'm not going to knock, I'm not going to knock that. That is kind of, you know, that is a little sweet, but it's Gary. We're it's Gary we're talking about. I No, it's Gary. So Karen, like I said, Karen is really upset. Like I said, I get why Karen is upset. He, 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 he almost smothered you to death, and I think that's the biggest thing. It's the it's the fact that he almost smothered you to death. But kind of going back to what Danny said, Andy, it's Andy's decision. Andy's a grown woman. You might not like her decision, but if you are her best friend and you love her, respect her decision. You know, you might not like it, you might not respect it, but be there to support her nonetheless. So Karen tells Andy, like, girl, I don't want any parts of this. I'm getting out of this wedding dress and I'm leaving. And in that instance, I can't knock, I can't knock Karen. You don't, if, if you don't agree with it and you don't support it, why do I need, why am I going to be here? Why am I going to be a witness to something that I don't 100% agree with? I got that. 
I just didn't get why she was so, you know, so, um, so, but her, it was, it was the way that she was, it was her, it was how vocal she was. I get, you know, I get it. Cause I've had, you know, me and my best friend, we've had definitely had conversations about things that she's done that I didn't agree with. But in the end, at, at, in the end of it, I told my best friend, I'm like, you know what? You know, I don't agree with that, but it's your decision. I love you. I support you no matter, I'm going to support you no matter what. It's just not something that I necessarily agree with. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. The eye candy at this part. Mm. Okay. So yeah, let's move on, you guys. All right, guys, next up, we got Gary. So Gary is talking to Aaron. Gary wonders if, you know, he did, if he did, if he did this wrong. Um, now, I wouldn't necessarily say that Gary did anything wrong. I think it's too soon. I will say that. I think it's just too soon. And I think given what Gary has done in the past, I think that's what's throwing the girls off. It's the fact that, you know, the shit with Jasmine, you know, him taking Andy to that, that house in the country. It's him, you know, bruising her ribs. It's him. It's everything that Gary has done leading up to this. I think that's what the issue is. If it was just, I think if it, if, 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 if the only issue in this situation was just Jasmine, I think maybe they could get, they could overlook though that thing. Because if they could just overlook the whole, if it wasn't, just, if it was just Jasmine, that would be one thing. But like I just said, the him him hugging Andy to the point of bruising her ribs, him taking Andy to that damn house in the country, it's all that it's all that stuff. Even him at the bank with his money, like it's all of the it's everything. It's not just one thing. It's a culmination of things that Gary has done. So that's. And I think that's really where Karen is coming from because Karen did list off what all has happened. Now, mind you, Karen does not know the, about the fact that Jasmine came into Andy's house, shot Gary with a rubber bullet, and tried to shoot Andy. That would have really slid, that would have really set her off. And Aaron tells Gary that you know maybe Andy should have known, right? But Gary says, but you know he repeats what Andy said, you know that this was their first, on their first date. She said that this is something, you know, this would be something that she would like. So Karen comes out and she tells um, Gary in no uncertain terms, I don't like you. If something happens to her, I got something for you. She leaves. And Aaron was about to follow her. She says, don't follow him behind me, Aaron. So he didn't. So then when Karen leaves out, Fatima's outside. And she's smoking, right? Fatima offers her a hit of her pen. She says no. So then Fatima tells um Karen that she didn't you know she didn't know about she and Zach and she says you know but she said you know he did talk about his ex but anytime he would talk about you he never mentioned you by name and you know whenever he would mention you I would you know I would dead the conversation basically um and then you know Fatima tells um her that there is just something different about Zach which I mean I'll give it to her there is something different about Zach we gonna talk about Zach in a little bit too so then, you know, Fatima asks her, are you leaving? She says, yes, I'm leaving. And, you know, Fatima's like, well, you know, you know, you might regret it. Like, that's your best friend. You might not agree with what she's doing, but you might look back and regret not being here for the biggest day in your best friend's life. Um, and she still leaves. She says, you know, she went off on him and she's leaving. I do think that Karen will, if Andy does go through with his wedding I do believe that Karen will, you know, have some sort of regrets like, damn, that's my best friend. Why can't I just put my, you know, my feelings about Gary to the side? And, you know, <laughs> looking, hindsight is 2020. Hindsight is 2020. You know, we tell our friends, we tell our family about our relationships with our significant others. And, you know, we tell them the bad. And sometimes we tell, we tell them the good. And, you know, when we tell them the bad, they don't like that person. But then we stick around with that person because me and my best friend, we, you know, I had an ex that my best friend could not stand for nothing. She could not stand my ex. And, you know, it was because 
I would I wouldn't mention the good things in the relationship, but I would also talk about some of the bad things. And she was finally happy when we when we finally broke up. She's like, it's about damn time. She's like, you know, she's like, she just could not stand my ex at all. So, but I know if, you know, if we went the long route, she would have been there to support me. Despite despite her feelings, she would have been there to support me. Um, Let's move on, you guys. Damn, I get long, I'm getting long with it with this show. All right, you guys. <coughs> <coughs> this scene with Maurice, right? So Maurice is at the club, right? Maurice is lying to the bartender, telling the bartender that he had two men fighting over him, Jacoby and um and uh Calvin, right? So then he asks the bartender if he knows Q, and the bartender says, "Yeah, I know who Q is. You know Q." It, he says he tells him Q has you know sticky fingers basically. And he says he comes in from time to time. And then you know Calvin comes into the um into the bar, right? Calvin has on this loud ass jacket. I'm like, Calvin, if you don't want people to believe, think, imply, believe, or think that you are gay, stop wearing the most flamboyant looking shit that you can find in this. Like, what stores? That's the question. What stores does Calvin shop in? It's like you go and look for the most feminine, flamboyant kind of stuff that you could wear. Like, I just... I can't. I really can't when it comes to Calvin because that jacket was just really, really loud, and 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 it was just loud to me. So Maurice is like, you know, are you meeting that girl here? Calvin was like, oh no, you know, I'm coming down here, you know, um, where my, you know, um, to be among my dad's friends. I'm like, oh my god, Calvin, you are so effing annoying. Like words can't even begin to describe how annoying um Calvin is to me, but he's annoying. So then this um, this Caucasian lady by the name of Peggy comes in there, right? So Peggy and Calvin hook up with each other. What happened to that other girl that he went on a date with? Whatever. So she's, and you know, Maurice is like, so you okay with him coming out, hanging out at the gay club? Now, mind you, there's nothing wrong with a straight man going to a gay club. There's nothing wrong with that. But straight men who go to, which you don't see too many of it, but when you see a straight man going to a gay club, they don't have the mannerisms that Calvin has. I think that's what the difference is. It's Calvin's mannerisms. It's his mannerisms. It's the way he dresses. It's And I get it. He was raised by two men. So he has no other... I mean... I ain't gonna say he has no other choice because, I mean... You could have two... You could be raised by two men, two women, and you still turn out straight, but... And they don't put they they don't impose their lifestyle on you. They don't they don't dress they dress you the, the way you want to be dressed. So it, it's just confusing when it comes to Calvin. It's really confusing. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with a gay man going to a straight a, a straight man going to a gay club. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just it's Calvin because Calvin gives you all kinds of question marks. And I think that's what the issue is. And they want to try to talk to Maurice as if he is being bigoted. I'm like, I don't think it's been bigoted. I think Maurice has had some valid questions. Like, girl, you give off gay vibes. Like, you really give off gay vibes. And I think that's what the issue is. So then she says, oh, we like to try different things. I'm like, oh, so you like to have, you so you like to, um, you know, put a dildo up his butt? Okay. She says, you know, we try, we try all, we try so many different things, minus um being with two men. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, why do we keep playing with this? Why do we keep playing with this? I was just confused, like, why do we keep playing with this? Because the way she said it, two, she said we never been with two men. She said two men. She didn't say we didn't we've never been with another man. She said we've never been with two men. Like you do realize that that implies that if you guys are with two men, right? You didn't say you you could have said we've never been with another man. And that could be taken many different that could be taken many different ways. If you say we've never been with another man, 
you could think that okay they're having a threesome so it's um you know one man in the front one man in the back or it could be you know i have saw some interesting porn where one man was on top of another one man was on one man <laughs> And I, it was it was on my Twitter timeline, and I saw it. I was like, oh wow, that is very interesting. So one man was on the bottom, you know, he was he was he was getting rolled by another man, and the woman was on top of the other man. I was like, oh wow, that is really interesting. Very interesting. When I saw that, I'm like, I would have never guessed that. How? I mean, that is a lot of weight. That's really what I was thinking about. I'm like, that is a lot of goddamn weight on that one man at the bottom. He got a man riding him, and the woman is riding another man. I'm like, that is a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of things on my Twitter timeline. A lot of things. Because I follow, I follow different people on Twitter. And I was just like, oh, wow, that is very interesting. Um, But yeah, when she said they've never been with two guys, I'm like, you do realize that can, that can, there is no way you can take that. Two guys. That means one guy is doing you and Calvin is having sex with the other guy, right? That's two guys. That's because she said her words were exact. We have not been with two guys. Two guys. Tyler, why do you keep playing with us with this whole, is Calvin gay? Is Calvin bi? Why do you keep playing with us with that one? Like that one, that is a storyline that I want us to be done with. Can we just say Calvin is straight? And can we just say Calvin likes, you know, his prostate tickled? There is nothing wrong with that. That is a G-spot for a man. The prostate. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I don't care if Calvin wants to get pegged, whatever. Whatever Calvin wants to do, let Calvin do it. But can we stop playing up this gay thing with Calvin? Let's move on. All right, guys. Next up, let's talk about Zach, right? So Zach went over to Danny's crib and Preston is there. And Zach smells the food. Zach is a hobosexual. I just noticed that. Zach is a whole hobosexual. So when he smelled the food, like, oh, what you cooking? He said steak and potato. So he went in. He noticed the music that um, Preston was listening to. I'm not going to get into that. So then, you know, um, I don't understand why Zach is all in um, his business, in, um, Calvin, not Preston's business with Danny. He asked Howard, you know, Danny and Preston. Preston says that they're good. So then he, so then Preston's like, okay, shit. So you want to be in my business? Let me hop in yours. How are you and um and Karen? So Zach is saying that that ship is still when he and Karen. No, it has not. You and Karen are not done with each other, not by a long shot. So um, so Zach, Zach at this point, he's really he's asking Preston questions about this insider trading i'm like zach do not do it learn from martha stewart don't do that let the insider trading go let that white woman do whatever the white woman want to do because she'll get a lot easier than you will so then we see karen so karen goes to her salon right and then karen hears moaning coming from her uh, the closet so she goes in there and it is pam getting it in i'm like girl Karen is better than me. Like, I would have... Karen is better than me. I would have either fired Pam or Pam would have gotten written up. Like, girl, why are you in here after hours having sex? Girl, go home. Go get a hotel. And Karen said, why don't you go home? She said, I don't want him to know where I live. Baby, There are there's a such thing called a hotel. Go get a hotel. Go get banged out. But don't be coming to my place of business. You know, don't be coming into my place of business after I was having sex. Like, disrespectful as hell. <laughs> you know what? I, I really shouldn't talk because I've had sex in one of. Have I, yes, I have. I've had sex in one of my um one of my jobs after hours because I had a key to the door, and the person lived. You know, I had got off of work, and you know, it happened. <laughs> Whatever. But luckily, there were no cameras. <laughs> but yeah um so then pam you know she leaves right so when pam leaves 
Karen calls Zach, right? She calls him on her cell phone, but you guys remember Zach blocked her after the last time, you know, after that whole situation on the um, airplane. He blocked her. So then she calls from the, um, the salon, right? So Zach's phone is ringing, and person like, your phone's ringing. He's like, oh, it's probably one of them, tell him, it's probably one of them bill collectors. It's nine o'clock, Zach. He's like, they sneaky. I'm like, Zach, it is nine o'clock. A bill collector cannot call you after nine o'clock. Like that's if you guys ever notice, bill collectors call you at eight thirty because they got that thirty minute window. After that, they they can't call you after nine p.m. Whatever your time zone is, they can't call you after nine p.m. and they can't call you before eight. A, they can't call you before eight a.m. and they can't call you after nine p.m. Because I've done collections. The work it actually wasn't the worst job I've ever had. It just was not the collections is not fun. Hated it. Collections is not a fun job to do. I work collections for Aaron's sales and Aaron's, you know, the um, furniture store. Whew. Never again. So he finally answers the phone, right? So Karen asked Zach to come down to the salon. Zach, at first he he said he wasn't gonna go down to the salon, but then he says, "Okay, once I finish my food, I'll be down there." Okay, let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Now, so we're gonna get ready to wrap the episode up, right? So. Maurice was still at the bar, right? And the bartender comes up to Maurice and is like, hey, there go Q. So Maurice went up to Q, talking to Q, right? So Q tells Maurice that he didn't steal anything. I'm like, oh, you didn't steal anything, right? So then Q is blaming it on Bootsy, saying that, you know, Bootsy told him that was his money. Okay. I'm so glad that Maurice just went and just like, pop, knocked, that, knocked his ass out. Because Maurice is like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm calling the cop. I'm, I'm going to call the cops. He's begging with him not to call the cops. I can do this for you. I can do that. I can do this. Nope. You can take this punch to the face. And now see, the thing that bothered me with that scene was the fact that Maurice knocked him out and he's dragging him out the club. He's like, oh, he's just drunk. So nobody just saw you just haul off and hit him in the face. Cool. So back over with Gary and them. Gary is growing impatient because Andy has not come out yet, right? Gary and Andy are at this point annoying the hell out of my spirit. So Aaron says that, you know, um, he's thinking about. Um, <coughs> so Aaron is telling. I, I have to think about it. Aaron is talking to Gary, right? Aaron is telling Gary that he's thinking about Karen. And Gary's like, why are you thinking about Karen? He's like, you know, we were dating. You know, I was about to say, y'all were not dating, but they actually were dating. If you guys use the actual term dating, Karen and Aaron were dating. Karen and Aaron had went out on a date with each other, so they were, in fact, dating. But Aaron is making it seem as if, the way Aaron said dating is as if they were actually going out, you know, like courting each other or in a relationship with each other. And Gary's like, you didn't tell me anything about that. Y'all both keeping secrets from each other. Y'all are both um, weirdos just keeping it real with you guys. So we move back over to Andy. So Andy had to get her makeup retouched because she's been crying, right? So at this point, Andy was annoying me, right? So Andy had already made up in her mind that she wanted to marry Gary, right? So as they get ready to, they get up to go out back out where Gary is, Andy says, I don't want to do this. I was like, girl, you done put me through a whole freaking hour of going saying that you wanted to marry this man because he remembered y'all's first date and what you told him, what you envisioned for your wedding, a surprise wedding, like a surprise birthday party. He remembered your dress. He remembered how you wanted your bouquet. He remembered how you wanted your bridesmaid's dresses to look. For you to now sit here and tell me that you don't want to do this. Andy, girl, I could slap the shit out of you, period, point blank. But that's a review, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Did you like it? Let me know what you guys think about everything. Andy, Gary, Aaron, Karen, Fatima, Preston, Dan, everybody. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share this video. And until the next one, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands. Please wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys do, just stay safe, you guys. Be blessed, socially distanced, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. 
and so then you guys bye